Good afternoon, everyone. This is T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy here to bring you the daily recap. So another a very choppy, frustrating day, I think, for a lot of traders, especially in the context of what we've seen this week. It's been one day up, one day down, one day up, one day down. Traders got used to an environment in 2013 where you could swing trade a little bit, where you could buy dips uh, and be trusting of dips. Uh, but in this environment, it's, it's anyone's guess right now about where the market's headed next. And I think a lot of traders, you know, after getting used to that environment, like I said, like we saw in 2013, uh, they're a little bit frustrated, scratching their heads right now, uh, feeling a little bit off balance based on the erratic action that we've seen in the market. But take a look at the chart of the spiders. As you can see, on Friday, we had that uh, the initial sell-off, and then it continued at the beginning of this week. Um, and then we've, like I said, had one day up, one day down, one day up, one day down every single day this week. This morning we came in after a really nice bounce back yesterday. People thought maybe, uh, you know, another chance to buy the dip. But then this morning we come in, futures are down, S&P futures open down, something like 18 handles, 17 handles. Um, but we were able to bounce back during the session just to keep everybody guessing even more. But then in the last hour of the session, we faded well off the highs uh, to keep people even more on their toes heading into next week. But I think the prevailing feeling right now is that we are headed lower. And I would tend to agree with that. There was a good article today, uh, J.C. Peretz, All-Star Charts, somebody on Twitter you should definitely follow. Good article about seasonal trends and things like that. And I don't put a whole lot of weight into seasonal trends. It's, it's back testing. It's looking at the past and trying to draw blanket conclusions based on things that have happened in the past. But what you should really look, uh, the way you should look at the past, the lens you should look at it through, is seasonal trends, when they don't hold true, that is when you should really uh, start asking some questions and being a little bit concerned about the action. And January typically is a very bullish month in the market. And uh, there was a statistic I saw today on Twitter as well that uh, the January indicator, you know, when we're down in January, uh, it's, it's forecast the year 75% of the time uh, that we're going to have a little bit weaker of a year. Uh, and January, like I said, is a stronger type of uh, time of the year. And then you also have midterm elections coming up. That's typically a weaker uh, cycle for the market. Uh, so you have a lot of different things that are lining up right now, uh, seasonal trends that one, the January trend is being violated, and then you have things like midterm election trends uh, that point to the market going lower. And you combine that with the technical action, which we've seen erratic, weak action uh, over the last couple of weeks. It's even intensified. And I think all those things point to a little bit deeper of a pullback. Uh, and, and overall, I think the action is pointing lower right now. Fundamentals as well, you could argue, a lot of people have been arguing the fundamental case for the market to go lower, uh, but technicals always rule the roost. Uh, technicals are always going to be your timing signal, and now sort of those themes of things being a little bit uh, overzealous from a fundamental side, and then now from a technical side, things are pointing a little bit lower. But we'll continue to obey the technicals next week to see uh, whether the market's able to bounce back or, or what type of bounce we do get uh, will we'll definitely dictate a lot of people's trading decisions going forward. And uh, just to keep going uh, with another story is that I had a trader come in my office this afternoon frustrated by the action. Uh, they were along Tesla, for example, which I'll go over uh, in a second. Tesla had a big drop in the afternoon, and they said, you know, John, what am I doing wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Uh, how should I change the way I'm approaching trading in the market? And what I told them is that your ideas are great. You know, this, this trader's been very successful earlier in their career, and, and overall I think their ideas are tremendous, but they were sitting at their desk today at 3.30, uh, in size in a stock like Tesla when I think one of the big lessons and this is what I told them that you need to learn is that you got to identify when to be aggressive and when to be a little bit more hands-off in the market and what a market veteran someone like Scott has been harping on and even someone like Mark Sperling who's ve always very active uh, very active buying dips sometimes he's definitely taking a step back a little bit when you're not seeing things clearly when the market is extremely erratic like we've seen this week it's a time to just take a step back and sit on your hands a little bit the thing about being a full-time trader is that you so often feel compelled like you have to be doing something in the market. It's your job, it's your nine to five, it's your livelihood. You feel like you should always be making bets, but in reality, uh, you should try to find ways to, to learn to sit on your hands a little bit. I know it's not a, a popular thing to say, and you're not always gonna have 100% conviction either way in the market, but if you're trying to be a swing trader in particular, uh, you should definitely not be placing big bets on a Friday, end of a month, you have markups and pinning and stuff like that at the end of the week in addition to the end of the month. It's just not a time to be aggressive, and overall, I think a lot of traders right now are spinning themselves in circles, and not only does it do, uh, do financial harm sometimes, not only do you lose money in a choppy environment perhaps, but also psychological harm. When you're a trader, 
and your investor, confidence is a big thing, conviction in your ideas. When you go through an environment like this, when it's choppy and you're losing money and you're not able to uh, see stocks you know, running in your favor, it does a lot of psychological damage and it, and it leaves you to have less conviction. So overall, I think you zoom out a little bit, you take a look at what's been going on, uh, and, and you take a very stock-specific approach, and, and overall you let things play out a little bit and don't feel like you have to be in the market all the time. Anyways, with that being said, I will go look at some stocks now and stop babbling about all these stories. Um, the biggest action that we've seen is stocks, uh, I'll take a look at Google first. The biggest action we saw today was stocks that recently reported earnings, uh, which is natural during earnings season. Uh, Google last night reported a decent quarter. It wasn't a blowout quarter. It actually went lower initially after hours yesterday, uh, but people started to dissect the report a little bit more, and it was actually a solid report. Uh, so it, Google gapped up nicely. It was weak early in the session while the market was bouncing back and actually almost uh, came back into the flat line, but then it rebounded. Uh, went back up to new highs and finished up about 4% to make a new all-time high. Uh, so the trend obviously remains very much intact for Google. That two-day pullback that we saw was a, a tremendous buying opportunity. When a stock like Google doesn't let you uh, a way in, doesn't give you many real technical patterns to give you a way in, sometimes you have to be willing to buy a dip aggressively uh, if it is a you know, more potent type pullback like we saw in those two days. But obviously in hindsight, that's a lot easier to say than it is uh, in the heat of the battle. Amazon, a whole different story. Amazon, you know, some people talked about how Amazon was one of the reasons why the futures were down so much this morning, and maybe that could be part of the case, but most of the other earnings last night were positive, and as I'll go through here, uh, most of those stocks that reported earnings last night finished higher, but Amazon, on the other hand, uh, was a gap and go to the downside, triggered the circuit breakers. It was down more than 10% today. Uh, closed near its highs yesterday, people expecting a good report. And Amazon's one that's gotten to pass a lot of recent earnings seasons. Uh, they've not really beat on estimates, not had a very good report, but uh, Wall Street has given them a pass and allowed the stock to hold higher. But in last night's report, they fell short of revenue numbers, which uh, for a stock like Amazon with a really high multiple that reinvests so much money in their business, it's natural sometimes if they you know, invest a little bit more money back in the business than they expected for EPS to fall a little bit short. But uh, for revenue numbers, for top line growth not to be there where people expect it to, I think that really weighed heavily. Uh, and obviously, you can see that in the chart as we got a gap and go to the downside. So in the short term, just now testing its 50 days. So overall, in the context of its macro chart, this is you know, not a huge deal. But uh, you can look at some daily support levels here. The next one will be around 350. If it can't hold that level, you could see it down to fill this gap, which would be right around the 200 day at 330. So those are levels to watch. If you see a gap and go to the downside like this, usually it leads to more downside at some point. Uh, Amazon has been a very strong, resilient stock, so we'll see if that remains the case uh, with Amazon. Chipotle, one of those ones I talked about that was very strong last night. And this is one, it's, it's crazy to see a, a restaurant chain like this trading at 40 times uh, earnings, but Chipotle growing tremendously and continues just to, to top Wall Street estimates almost at every turn when some people think this could be a candidate to roll over. Uh, but as you can see, finished up about 12% today at new all-time highs. At one point, it was actually higher during the day and pulled off a little bit, but it's very constructive to see it hold almost the entire gap. And what we'll want to see now is some sideways consolidation here at new highs uh, for maybe a potential another move to the upside. And then Zynga. One man's trash is another's treasure here. As uh, Scott calls his trash to treasures trades, this has been an extremely laggard stock. Uh, one that you know is not even on my radar as a uh, longer term, more value oriented uh, trader, investor, whatever you want to call it. But in these beaten down stocks with big short interest, if you get some positive news, it can definitely trigger huge percentage moves. And uh, some people are better at trading these type of ideas than others. Uh, but a lot of times when you see these big moves in stocks, it can lead to eventually coming back down to lows. But we'll see what this leads to in Zynga. Zynga finished the day up around 23%, so a monster move there. Uh, after reporting earnings last night a week ahead of schedule. Also, they announced they were laying off 15% of their workforce, which is around 300 employees, and also acquired one of their big competitors for around $500 million. All that together was able to lead to this big bounce and very constructive to see a gap and go to the upside and commitment to that gap. And the next pivot, obviously, will be here at uh, 455 is the high. So if you can get above that, I think you could get some more momentum, another squeeze in Zynga. Who knows about its longer term? Uh, future. I remember back when Facebook was getting ready to IPO, Zynga was up here uh, you know, in the low teens. People were talking about it going up to 2030 uh, due to the fact that it's very intertwined with Facebook. 
and quite a fall from grace we've seen with Zynga. And, and like I said, their long-term viability is, is still in question. When another one that was actually didn't gap up huge on a, a solid earnings report, but it saw some uh, call buying during the session today. I think people are very bullish on the report the more they dug into it. Uh, and so you continue to see buying interest come in to, to win. It actually made a new 52-week high here, uh, thanks to all that strength that we saw during the session. But this is one that may be a little bit hard to chase after a day up, sort of like those other ones that uh, gapped up on earnings. But what we want to see is some sideways digestion here at highs. And these are the names that we're going to be looking to play long on dips or sideways action. If the market is weak, these earnings names, we'll look to see if they can hold up amid the storm or whether uh, the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater. And then MasterCard. This is another one that was weak. Uh, the credit cards have been on ridiculous uptrends. You can go to the monthly chart just to see almost parabolic on a monthly chart. And we could see the first real significant month down here in, in MasterCard. Uh, we did see the first sig uh, significant month down as January is now ending. So this could be something to take notice of uh, in the credit cards after a huge run. Maybe they need a little bit of rest, a little bit of sideways action. Uh, but on a short-term basis, we'll just see how MasterCard treats this gap, uh, whether or not it can continue to hold the 50-day. It did close well off its lows of the day, so that's encouraging at least. Uh, but we'll want to see it start to enter its gap next week if it's going to uh, repair the chart a little bit. If not, get some sideways action or bleeds lower. I think you could see it down at its 200-day, down there around 68. Uh, and that'll about do it for the earnings from last night that are most notable and most on our radar. But there's also some other uh, stocks in tech, some of which reported recent earnings that were strong today, particularly in social media. Facebook uh, continues. They've really figured out the mobile uh, aspect of their business. I remember the, the first earnings report. We'll take a look at the chart of Facebook while I talk about it. Uh, you learn more that way than looking at my face. But going back, looking at the weekly chart, obviously Facebook had that tough go of it after the IPO. There were too many shares in the float. It was overpriced, whatever you want to say. But the real problem with Facebook was that they didn't have any idea what they were doing with mobile. Facebook was a very popular social uh, network on desktops, but uh, things like Twitter and other social networks were really eating their lunch as far as monetizing uh, mobile usership. And they've, they've made some tweaks to their mobile app, and they've uh, done, made some tweaks with their mobile ad technology in particular, where on this earnings report uh, that led to this big gap here, that was the start of everything, where they really made a big jump surpass expectations on their mobile ad revenue and, and that paved the way. I remember talking about this stock. When you see a huge gap like we saw there, I'll zoom out on the daily so we can get a look at the gap. If I can get there. It was back here. So it went from 26 up to 34, highly surpassed expectations on earnings and had a huge move and, and that really changed the composure for Facebook. It's something that we talked about at the time. Uh, you know, obviously if we knew it was going from the low 30s uh, up into the 60s, I think you know, we'd have a little bit more money in our pockets than we do now. It's obviously hard to make a prediction, 100% move in, in Facebook, but that's when it really changed composure and became a, a go-to type stock. And now it continues to surpass those mobile ad expectations and uh, surpass earnings expectations and enhance the reputation of Mark Zuckerberg. And what we're seeing now is commitment to the gap, just like we talked about in those other stocks that gapped up. What you want to see is it hold the gap on the first day, the first few days, and then potentially look to work higher. It didn't even allow time for the uh, 8 and 21 day moving averages to play catch up, which is what we'd ideally like to see. But really nice engulfing day today, finished up more than 2% and, and showing itself as a market leader. And, and who knows where this thing could go? It's talking about becoming a search engine to rival Google and stuff like that. People talk about the, the valuation for Facebook maybe getting a little ahead of itself, but you can definitely see the potential in that company. Uh, based on everything that Mark Zuckerberg talked about in the earnings call last night that really got people, uh, two nights ago, they got people really excited. And then Twitter also, in sympathy with Facebook, Twitter is a very interesting case, and earnings next week will be very interesting because this is a company, it is a, it's rare for a new IPO for a company to be in such a hyper growth phase. And Twitter is a very popular social network, but they haven't really figured out exactly, uh, they found their legs in terms of monetizing the platform. So the first earnings report will be interesting to see whether they can uh, meet expectations and if they don't meet expectations how much they'll get punished for that uh, but I, I think uh, Twitter's obviously a play for the future uh, they're not one that's monetizing everything very well right now but uh, very, be very interesting to see what happens on Wednesday but as you can see it's been strong gapping up with Facebook on the earnings report and then pushing higher with Facebook again today so this is one that I'm pretty bullish on the low float I also think uh, creates demand there and potentially push the shares higher but 
Uh, it's not one that I would be looking to swing trade or hold through earnings. I would wait till earnings come out and see what happens. Just like you saw with Facebook on that uh, gap up we saw earlier last year, uh, there will be room if it's going to be strong, if it's going to start to figure out how to monetize the platform, there will be opportunities to enter Twitter. Uh, so I wouldn't be you know, too hell-bent on owning this before earnings and, and having a fear of missing out on a move or anything like that. Uh, Netflix had a blowout quarter again, another one that continues to surpass earnings expectations after uh, a rough patch there where it dipped down below 100 and then Carl Icahn got involved and uh, the rest is history. But this is one that, again, gapped up, commitment to the gap, a few sideways days, allowed the eight-day moving average to play catch up and then ignited again. And then two more days of digestive type action on uh, Wednesday and Thursday and then today made a new high briefly. It did pull slightly off its highs, but this is going to be another name that I think will be a go-to name on any pullback, any sideways consolidation. Look for relative strength in this name if there is market turmoil. And then Tesla was an interesting case. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, was showing a lot of really nice strength. It gapped down with the market this morning, but then pushed higher, made a new high. Looked like it was headed towards all-time highs around uh, 190 and change. But uh, in late afternoon, a sharp sell-off in Tesla. Some people attribute it to reports that BMW is, they've engineered a, an electric car and the waiting list uh, is incredibly long for that car. There's, there's high demand for it. Uh, maybe some people are going to enter the electric car space and start to uh, take some of Tesla's market share in that space. So that's one reason people uh, thought maybe that sell-off occurred. Who knows, could be just some you know, technical uh, issues on a Friday end of the month, you know, some behind the scenes stuff that we don't know about. But overall, I think Tesla's holding up really well above its eight-day moving average, whereas the market's having a lot of problems. I think this is one that'll continue to, to get a bid, and I think uh, you could definitely see it back at highs at 190 and change uh, sooner rather than later. Kihu, another one. We didn't list it on off the charts, but we've been talking about it in Scott's morning note uh, and in a couple morning calls, I believe. This one showed nice strength yesterday, broke out to new highs. Um, when the market bounced back, it held up better and, and has held above its 8 and 21 day moving averages. And then today extended really nicely after a lower open. A uh, really big percentage move there, finished up um, almost 4%. So uh, another potential go-to stock, a retest of that $95 area might be the next uh, compelling entry spot if we do get that retest. Uh, and then a couple other ones, GMCR had a really nice day. Uh, looks like it might want to break out to new pivot highs at least. Uh, the, the level to watch here will be 8180. This is one that we had listed on off the charts, but amid that market turmoil, a lot of stops got hit in swing trading ideas, uh, which, which makes sense, and it happens. But uh, GMCR, we had this pattern highlighted, but like I said, during that market weakness, we dipped down below, tested the 50-day. It looks like we're uh, now heading back to the top end of that range. So that trigger price, even though the pattern is a little bit sloppy now, that trigger price uh, could get hit, and we could get a, a move up here to the mid-80s mid to high 80s um, before resistance comes into play. Over here on the left, we got resistance here around the $90 area. So definitely uh, showing some relative strength today. And then also a WWE. I got to give a shout out to uh, R. Durant on the VTF. He called this sucker out. Uh, you might say world uh, wrestling entertainment. You're really talking about buying that stock. And, and when he came out with that call, uh, this is a subscriber on our virtual trading floor. You know. I, some people might have brushed it off because of the, the company that was being mentioned, but he called it out in the 16 and change area. Uh, they renegotiated some TV deals that were previously not as lucrative, and they, they got a really good deal from B Sky B on those TV rights. And leading up to that uh, TV deal announcement, and then after the TV de uh, deal announcement, which came yesterday early in the day, really impressive strength there. And that's just an amazing call, a 50% move uh, from those levels when it first came on the radar. Uh, so just an example of some strong stocks showing some relative strength uh, that if you are a good stock picker and you are good at identifying uh, some narratives and some uh, relative strength in the market, even when the market's weak and choppy, there are stocks that can break out. So uh, encouraging at least, even if you're not involved in the trade. And then bonds, one final word, I'll talk a little macro stuff. Uh, bonds continue to be strong. And this is an example of market sentiment. I think everybody and their mother and their cab driver and their doctor and their dentist were talking about, oh, you know, interest rates are going up, bonds are going to get crushed. It, it became the, the popular narrative that bonds were completely doomed. And if you were someone that was actually bullish on bonds, you were, you were crazy. You were written off. But what we've seen is sentiment got so skewed in one direction that sometimes that can lead to a move in the opposite direction. That will, that's what we've seen in bonds. Uh, TLT, which is the bond ETF, continue to be strong today. Uh, now, 
it, macro wise it is weak and it's now coming into some resistance here it's a 200 day moving average but uh, that'll be an interesting level to watch to see if bonds can get even more strength uh, sustained strength uh, besides just this bounce that we've seen off of lows but uh, something interesting to watch and just a lesson in market sentiment that uh, when everybody thinks something's going to happen a lot of times at least temporarily it, it's not going to happen and be neat and tidy like everyone wants it to be and uh, while bond yields uh, have continued to to hang in there uh, things like XLU have been able to be strong and show relative strength. That's the weekly chart there, a really impressive week, uh, week for the XLU where a lot of other sectors were uh, very weak. You can see today, really nice extension after a slightly down open. And as long as bonds are strong, I think you continue to see that uh, in XLU. Anyways, it, it was an interesting day, an interesting week for sure. Uh, if nothing else, volatility has exploded and woken up and it's going to continue to provide two-way opportunities uh, if you're quick and nimble. I think. If you're an ultra long-term trader right now, uh, I think you still sit tight. You wait for more gradual trends to be broken. We've seen some accelerated trends break, uh, but the longer-term trends are still intact. So I think you're a long-term trader. You go back to sleep. Uh, if you're a swing-type trader, I think you do a little bit less right now. Wait for uh, some tighter patterns and stuff like that, and, and obviously identify relative strength and all the things that we always talk about. And if you're a short-term trader, I think... Uh, you go flat overnight, you wait for things to calm down a little bit in terms of the futures and uh, the headlines and, and big gaps and things like that, and you take a little bit more of a sniper's approach. But uh, with the end of the month now gone and all the January talk sort of uh, quieting down, you can maybe get things to settle down a little bit in February as long as the emerging markets uh, play ball and, and cool off a little bit. But interesting environment, difficult environment, uh, depending on your time frame and stuff like that. So if you're having any sort of problems like I talked about in the beginning of the show, don't be afraid to sit on your hands, sit back and just watch a little bit because I think you'll learn a lot from watching uh, and not being married to positions and being concerned about everything that you're in all the time. Uh, but this has been John Darcy here for the Daily Recap. Uh, I won't be here next week, but uh, you'll see Scott here on Monday for the morning call and I uh, hope everyone has a good week.